Hi, I'm Pastor Jonas Hayes, pastor of Grace First Presbyterian Church in Long Beach. And I have a message to share with you this morning that is rooted in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 24 to 26. Hear now God's word to us. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving and compassionate God, help us to be still and to know that you are God. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dr. Jordan Peterson, a psychologist and a professor at the University of Toronto, said, pick up the heaviest thing that you can and carry it. What might that be for you today? Jesus Christ said it another way. He said, take up your cross and follow me. This is the call to live as compassionate disciples. Compassion is the spiritual gift that God has blessed us with to connect with God and to connect with other people. The etymology of the word compassion is interesting. It's uh, rooted in a Latin word, compati, which literally translates to mean suffer with. Therefore, to have compassion on others, we must suffer with God and suffer with one another. The Hebrew word is rechun, uh, which translates and comes from the stem word rechem, which literally means womb. This depicts God in feminine language as a God who suffers in a similar way that a mother suffers along with her child who is in her womb. Take up your cross and follow me, Jesus says. Pick up the heaviest thing that you can and walk with it, carry it. Some of the most compassionate people that I know are patient. Uh, they have a way of sitting with us, acknowledging our experience of pain, of grief. They see that it's there and they help us to identify it, to recognize it, and that helps us connect more deeply with ourselves and it helps us connect more deeply with Almighty God through this spiritual gift of compassion. Henry Nouwen, one of my favorite spiritual writers, he was at a time of spiritual grief and struggle, and he visited the Grand Canyon, and he spoke of this experience of helping him deepen his practice of compassion, deepening his practice of suffering with another person, suffering similar to a mother who suffers along with her children. He shares this story. He said, looking out at the Grand Canyon, I thought, my dear, why all these problems? Looking out at the Grand Canyon, at that enormous abyss of beauty, the strange depression that I was experiencing, it fell away. I felt the silence. In the face of this natural wonder of the Grand Canyon, I thought, what are you worrying about? As if you're carrying the burden of a world, a world that survived long before you and is something that will go on a long time after you, why don't you just enjoy your life and really live it? He said, this image of the Grand Canyon, it stayed with me for a long time. And this is why. God is like the Grand Canyon. God suffered the wound, a wound of all of humanity. And if I enter the presence of that wound, my burden becomes a light burden or a light pain. Not because the pain is not there, but because it has been embraced by love, end quote. I'm remembering a much beloved member of the church, Sherry Morse, who recently passed away. Uh, she recently joined our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and her family and her husband, Mike Morse, shared a story with me that I thought was incredibly meaningful. They spoke about how several years ago, 
Sherry and her family, they went and visited the Grand Canyon. And in this, on this trip, she was absolutely in tears. She thought it was unattainable to take this trip. She felt such a connection with God's people, with her family, with her church family, with all of creation as she looked at this beautiful, great chasm of the Grand Canyon. God calls us to embrace the spiritual gift of compassion. And Jesus calls us to live as children of God, sharing this gift of compassion and this gift of love, not out of fear. If we seek fear, we're not in search for the truth, says William Sloan Coffin. What we're in search for is security. But when we're living in compassion and love, it has a limbering effect on one's mind. Isn't that so true? Jesus says in the Gospels, it's one of my favorite Gospels in the Gospel of John, uh, he speaks this beautiful litany of love to Simon Peter, who is trying to strengthen his practice of love and compassion. And he looks at him right in the eye and he says, Simon Peter, do you love me? And of course, Simon Peter says, yes, I love you, Lord. And Jesus comes again and says, well, Simon Peter, do you love me? And he says, well, yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. And then Jesus asks a third time. This time, Simon Peter becomes absolutely distraught and in despair. He says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus here says one of the most surprising things, I think, in most all of Scripture. He makes this very abrupt transition. As he says this, when you were young, you girded yourself and you went where you wanted to go. And when you grow old, you will stretch out your arms and someone else will gird you and lead you where you would rather not go. I wonder why does Jesus make this transition from this beautiful litany of love to then speaking of our stretching out our arms and being led to a place where we would rather not go. It seems confusing to me. But as I've prayed with this scripture over these past couple of weeks, what I've reflected upon as as we grow older as people of God, as human beings, uh, as we grow older in our faith and as we stretch out our arms, God will lead us to places that we would rather not go. That is what we are called to do in our life of faith. Where is it that you are being led this day? As God is calling you to embrace what it means to live in true love and compassion with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. People of God this day, may God empower us to live as more faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. And may we live more faithfully as people of compassion. I pray all this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.